So, team, we just got a round of venture capital funding for our drone project, but what should we use this funding for? We could use the drones to deliver medical supplies to hospitals in remote areas. Or we could use them for expedited mail shipment. But what if we use them to deliver sperm? And then, after the sperm was delivered, the drone immediately blew up to self-destruct. Johnson, you're a genius. Let's use drones to blow things up. That's not quite what I meant. Your parents might have given you the birds and bees talk, but on this episode of BioWark, I'm going to give you the bees and the bees talk. Specifically, the honeybees and honeybees talk. Out of the 20,000 species of bees, it's probably the worst to be born as a drone in one of the eight species of honeybees. Their life is essentially the life of Johnson's drone idea, deliver sperm and then die. From the get-go, male honeybees or drones are given the short end of the stick. Or, well, the chromosome. They only have half the chromosomes of their worker bee and queen sisters. Drones develop from haploid, or unfertilized eggs. After all, why would they need a more complex genetic code when their only purpose in life is to find a queen and then die? The childhood of drones is not particularly fun. Larvae that are destined to become queens are locked away in a honeycomb cell full of a protein-rich substance called royal jelly. Regular larvae, both future workers and drones, get some royal jelly too, but they eat it as it's being made. This royal jelly is secreted by young worker bees from a gland near their mouths. So, it's almost like the workers are just vomiting into the larvae's mouths. So, for the first few days of their lives, drones are fed by their sisters yakking up jelly into their mouths. It should be noted that drones aren't just laid by queens. Female workers never breed, and most are functionally sterile. But some have ovaries that are developed enough that they can lay eggs that develop into drones since they're unfertilized. For those not laid by queens, their first few days can be pretty rough and few, if any, survive. You see, a hive's workers will be the daughters of the queen, so they have a genetic motive to care for their little brothers or half-brothers over their nephews. Usually, queen bees will spray her laid eggs with a pheromone that identifies the egg as her own. Eggs that lack these pheromones will often be destroyed by the worker bees, sort of like how angels passed over murdering the firstborn sons in Egypt with lamb's blood painted over their doorstep. Out of the up to 1,500 to 2,000 eggs a queen lays per day, only about half a dozen or so that day are destined to become drones. It's no surprise that so few are laid in a day because they are essentially just a drain on the colony's resources. Except for a species in Vietnam that may fling feces at invaders alongside of their sisters, drones don't even help defend their colony since they aren't even equipped with stingers. They are, however, equipped with very large eyes so they can locate queens during mating flights. What are mating flights, you may ask? Imagine a debutante coming into a ballroom and then dozens of men around her start vigorously asking for her hand in marriage. After a queen is about 20 or so days old, she goes out to find drones. After, of course, killing off any other queens in her colony. Queens are equipped with unbarbed stingers, so like wasps, they can sting as many times as they want to. So the queen these drones are trying to court is more like Amelia Dyer than Cinderella. These drones congregate in, you guessed it, drone congregation areas. Eventually, queens will pass near enough by, all the while releasing a pheromone that the drones can follow over to her. What follows, however, is not romantic at all, but horrific. Drones may not be equipped with stingers, but their endophaluses, or their analogs to the penis, are also barbed. Upon flying after a queen and fertilizing her, the endophalus remains inside her body, potentially with like half of the drone's lower body, too. It's basically like the extreme version of leaving an earring at a date's house so that they'll call you back. Except that you die afterwards, and then your date starts seeing other men immediately. Being a drone honeybee is essentially dedicating your entire life to the singular goal of mating with a queen bee. You are so singularly dedicated to this goal that in the process of mating, you literally rip out your mating appendage, ending your own life in the process. And then, as you fall to your death, the last thing that you witness is some other dude cucking you. He rips your endophalus out of your queen, the endophalus you had to painfully dismember, and sacrifice your life to leave in her. Some other dude just comes and rips out your dong and mates with your queen right in front of your very large eyes as you fall to the ground to your doom. 
and sometimes it isn't just one other dude. A queen usually mates with 6 to 20 drones, and if you're an Apis Nigrokinkta, you might witness up to another 41 to 68 drones mating with your queen. Sure, it definitely sucks actually mating with a queen, you know, with dying and all that, but drones who never mate with a queen, or for whatever reason don't die after mating, don't last that long afterwards either. Come winter, when the hive has to huddle together like emperor penguins to survive the cold and live off of their meager honey reserves, drones pretty much immediately get kicked out of the hives en masse because they're just too expensive to take care of when compared to what they actually bring to the table. Which, for the record, is nothing at all besides for sperm. They don't make beeswax or honey or take care of larvae. They just eat, maybe mate once, and then die. Which, to be fair, might be some people's idea of a good time. If that's the case, well, more power to you, I guess. The battle of the honeybee drone doesn't even end after they die, though. Their sperm has to keep on fighting to get picked by the queen that they fertilized. The seminal fluid of most animals acts to protect the sperm it's carrying and boost the survival rates of the little warriors. But honeybee seminal fluids have an added edge. Their seminal fluids attack any other sperm. When researchers mixed a sample of one honeybee sperm with another, the survival rates of the competitor was slashed to as low as 6%. And this is just after only 30 minutes. Imagine how little would be left after a queen's 1-2 to two year lifespan. You'd think that these offensive chemicals would avoid damaging the sperm of related bees since those cells carry similar genetic information, but that's not the case. These chemicals will go after even brothers. Even worse for both honeybee kind and the queen, and honestly even all the males, is that sperm doesn't come with any counters for the destructive chemicals of other sperm. All of the sperm, once they're in the queen, simply die. Or, at any rate, the vast majority of the sperm would if it weren't for the queen. In other polyamorous eusocial insects like the leafcutter ant, the queen has been observed releasing hormones that quell the sperm war so she can actually eventually fertilize some eggs. It wouldn't be surprising if queen honeybees had similar sorts of chemicals as well, but that just adds further insult to injury being a male honeybee. He literally risks life and limb to mate, and once his sperm is inside the queen, his singular and only legacy after his death, the queen is just like, you're annoying me, chill out, and then sprays the bee sperm equivalent of chloroform on the angry sperm. That'd be like if after you died, you arranged for flowers and love notes to be sent to your widow every day so that she'd remember your love for her, and then, after a while, she paid the UPS driver to stop delivering those love letters because she was getting so many from too many men and it was becoming all just a bit too much. So, yeah, being a male honeybee really does suck. But if you're one of the male honeybees that didn't get a chance to mate with a queen, you can die happily knowing that once she gets too old to efficiently lay eggs, her own workers will simply smother her to death. On second thought, maybe just being a bee in general sucks. 